Carving a turkey can seem really intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. You just have to have the right tools. So I'm gonna use a carving fork and a carving knife, also known as a slicing knife. And then I've actually brought in some shears and a boning knife too. I'm pretty casual when I roast my turkey and I'm actually gonna carve this in the kitchen because I think that you get more yield off your bird when you take the time to do that in the kitchen instead of table side. I'm gonna take off the twine because I only trust the legs. Take that off. Cook on this turkey is perfect. Like I said, since I'm in the kitchen, it's so great because no one can see me using my hands like this, but you really get more control that way. So let's start. I'm gonna start by removing it in three pieces. I'm gonna remove the leg and then the wing and then the breast, and then I'll slice it and put it on my platter. So for this, start with my hands. Again, it's great. Now you just really wanna make sure that it's stable, and that's what I love a carving fork for. And when you put the slicing knife in, you don't wanna saw your turkey. That's gonna leave you with that jagged edge. Instead, you'll just see me using long strokes of the knife. So let's get it started. Oh my gosh, amazing. So here, what I'm saying you can do in the kitchen that you couldn't do table side is just to pull this down. Now I can just use my hands to kind of pull down and see where that joint is. And use a boning knife, which is smaller, to get in there and get around the joint. Perfect, there it is. That is why I like this smaller knife. There you go, the whole leg comes off really easily. Now the wing. And now for the breast. I'm going to take the entire breast off and then slice it. So again, I want stability, and I'm using the boning knife because I love that I can be right up against this bone and feel it. It's just gonna ensure I get the most meat possible off this turkey. I can see the bone right there, this is perfect. Again, as long of a slice that you can make as possible is gonna make for a prettier presentation. Great, now let's get the side. Really important cut. I'm gonna go as low as possible so you really capture all of that meat. So now I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll come back and slice the whole turkey. To carve the leg, I like to separate the drumstick from the thigh. So again, just using my hands, just get right around this joint. Can't be shy. I like to serve the drumstick whole on the platter. And look at this, so cool. Instead of thinking about taking the turkey off the bone, just think about getting around this bone and keeping all of this turkey intact. So we're just gonna carve as close to the bone as possible around it. You're gonna be left with this little flap of meat that's really easy to slice. Make sure you have really dry hands when you do this. You can stop and wipe them down so that you don't slip. I'm working with a very sharp knife. Okay, so see how that's just gonna slide out? Now when you flip it over, you've got a more uniform piece of meat to slice. Great. I'm gonna slice this, I'm gonna go back to my slicing knife. So great. Just get nice, even slices. I like to leave a little bit of the skin on each piece. Again, don't be afraid to use your hands. They're your best tools in the kitchen. Now to carve the breast. I'm just gonna make even slices all the way across so that hopefully everybody gets a little piece of skin. Just moving my fork back for stability.
Now I've carved all the meat, but don't forget we've got this incredible carcass with lots of little pieces still on it. So what I would typically do is just do turkey soup with it, or I take all the pieces off and make my mom's turkey tetrazzini. It's so old school and delicious, I love it. So I finished carving the turkey and look at how beautiful the presentation is. You can see how much dark meat I got off the thigh and I love taking it to the table this way because everybody can serve themselves. Now all that's missing is the gravy.